Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before, and I'm here with the Dark Knights Metal team from McFarland Toys. I just did a review of The Drowned here, and uh, someone, Kevin, left a comment on that video, uh, and he said he would love to see a review of the rest of the team, and uh, the rest of the figures in this line, in this team, I should say, uh, they came out before this channel even existed. So I thought it would be a good idea to just bring them all out and do a, do a kind of a team review uh, and that it would be interesting because this, uh, this team, all the figures that make up this team, go all the way back to the first wave um, from the multiverse line. Uh, so uh, we'll kind of get to see a little bit of, um, of the journey that uh, you know this line has kind of taken from the get-go see a little bit of the best, a little bit of the worst of, of what the, the line has to offer um, as represented by the, the figures that make up this team. And I wanted to say a, a little bit about my kind of experience with the Multiverse line. Uh, when it first came out last year, you know, the first wave, I, I wasn't, I was kind of sitting on the sidelines and it looked really cool. And um, I mean, just the, the sheer fact that McFarlane was doing uh, a DC line was was pretty exciting um but i didn't i didn't get off the sidelines and start picking them up until the white knight uh characters started coming out um because i'm a big fan of the the white knight uh comics of, of sean gordon murphy his art is so cool and uh I, it was really exciting i think to see that the mcfarland could maybe do some of those um storyline specific art styles um, and, and kind of represent maybe some of the the storylines and the characters and the and the art styles um, that don't always get as much attention uh, in, in the action figure form. So you know, I I got all those, and then they they re announced the, these Dark Knights. I hadn't really read that that comic story, um, so I was probably I mean I was I was planning on not getting them, um, and then I saw them in person, and I was like, okay, well I got to go down this rabbit hole. Um, and that is kind of representative of like most of the figures they announced for this line, um, which is that uh, at first I'm like, eh, it looks all right. I'm probably not going to get it. And then I see it in person. It The pictures do, do not do them justice. They look so cool uh, and they feel so great just in hand that uh, I, 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 as you can tell, I, I kind of bought all in uh, on the multiverse line. And so... Um, one last thing before I get going, uh, the way I have them displayed here is more or less the way I have them displayed uh, in in the IKEA cabinet that you can see um, in the back. And my feelings about you know those IKEA cabinets they get the job done. But one thing I think people don't take quite as much advantage of when they have these cabinets is the vertical space. You know, especially for a six seven inch line they don't take up a lot of vertical space. So my sort of, um, uh, my solution um, to that was was to start picking up these uh, clear acrylic risers here. And I'll put links to them um, in, the, in the description of this video. I, I really recommend them. I bought them several times over. Um, and they, they for one, they, they fill out the vertical space, you know, give, give everything a little bit more uh, sort of, dimension you know you can stack characters you can get them up higher and it also kind of compensates for maybe some uh, uh scale issues you know like the fact that devastator never really um uh he should be taller than everybody but he's not um which is just you know part of the scaling of, of the way they've done this line uh and and so that that's that's been my solution um and i, I love getting to pose these characters this way in a way that kind of makes me think of like a, you know, a movie poster or even, you know, just a, a, a shot from the comic book, a panel of the comic book where you've got, uh, where you get to play with different, um, sort of the vertical space of it. So that, that's my, those are my suggestions. Um, if you're, if you're displaying your stuff at home and you're looking for some ideas. So I'm going to get into these guys. I'm just going to do them. I'm going to review them in order of my least favorite, to my favorite of this team, um, which may be a little controversial, 
Um, and if you, you know, if your, your opinion is different than mine, uh, uh, let me know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what everybody likes or dislikes about uh, all these different characters. So uh, here we go. And I, this is where I'm going to get hate mail, probably, because my least favorite of this whole team is Red Death. And uh, a number of number of things kind of bothered me about this figure. For one, and this is part of just the way he's designed, he feels really uncomfortable. <laughs> like any way, anywhere you grab him, he's got little you know fins um, and blades that are just kind of poking you, and it it just like it just makes it kind of unpleasant to uh, to play with. Uh, and then another thing is. This one hand, it, it skews a little uh, toward a gun hand, in my opinion. It it does pass off as a as a gesture hand, kind of, you know, um, if you've got them in a running pose. But it's got it's it's got a like um, there's you know if if you're if you're running, you're kind of you know your muscles are tensed up. You're making a you're making a fist, or you've got an open palm which is represented by this, well, by this flash. And actually, I did get the wrong hands for this flash when they sent him. That's a little um, beside the point. But this, you know, flash, he had a fist, and he's got an open hand. It would convey running poses really well. Um, and, and speaking of running poses, this guy's articulation, it just doesn't. Like, I can't... I, the, the legs... All right, that's fine, I guess. Um, but this torso, he's got these details that are sculpted down from the chest. Um, and he doesn't, like, quite get much of a crunch. Um, or as much as I would like, I would think, to get him in a more of a dynamic um, pose for running, right? He's a speedster. I, I would like to be able to just have a little bit more um, to to play with and getting him in uh, more of a running pose. These are, uh, his uh, rotation here is, is impaired by the, the pelvis, the crotch piece, um, which it kind of annoys me. And um, he's, a, he's a little bow-legged, which just it looks a little weird. Um, and then uh, just another point of comparison to this other flash, which he came with in the two-pack. This flash kind of has, um, it, it's got kind of a naked feel about the paint. It feels just like very light, um, flat paint application. Um, and it feels really great in hand. This feels like covered head to toe in a paint that, uh, it act like it makes the plastic actually feel cheaper. Um, and, and I, you know, it, Whatever they've done to get, you know, they've got the this this darker red is a matte, and the the more vibrant red is a is a shinier. Just whatever whatever they've done to um to achieve that look, it makes it feel like kind of not very good plastic. So that's Red Death. Unfortunately, my least favorite of the of the bunch. Still a cool cool figure, um, and. You know, a cool character. I know a lot of people are, are particularly attached to this character. I do maybe feel that maybe that um, skews their opinion of how good this figure is um, more positive than maybe it deserves. That's just my opinion. Your mileage may vary. Uh, so let's go into um, second least favorite. Uh, and that's going to be this Batman Who Laughs. And this is obviously a Wave 1 release, and some of those Wave 1 kind of um, growing pains are, are are pretty evident in this. I would say the character from the waist down looks excellent. I love the way his cape, or his, um, his jacket kind of cloak here is, the way it's all torn and it's kind of blowing in the wind. These little, these big, uh, his Doc Martin um, wild, uh, Rockstar boots look really cool. 
this um the way this sculpt here of the pants hits the, um is is sculpted to look like it's part of the pelvis piece maybe not the most successful decision here um and but then when you go up to the the top half of the figure that's where i think um more of the flaw the flaws are evident the um the rubber torso is great uh it works really well but it's got kind of like it flares up here in the shoulders and then his shoulders are actually set kind of feels far apart doesn't feel like they maybe nailed the body language of uh of that character um and, and then also the i feel like the neck should be a little bit longer the functionality is awesome the way you can move this all the way down like this and he looks like he has a lot of like attitude um in in, in any way you put it. it feels really expressive but i think a little bit longer because it just feels like it's like you know, he's got his, like, I don't know, you know, that he's got his sort of shoulder muscles tensed up and his, his neck is sitting kind of, you know, his head's sitting kind of low on his shoulders in a way that I feel like just doesn't maybe nail that character. But, uh, I mean, you know, next to all the others, he gets the job done as far as, as completing the look. But just got, had some kind of the wave one hurdles that maybe um, didn't quite uh, achieve uh, what they did in later waves. Um, okay, so now um, third from the bottom is going to be the Dawnbreaker. Uh, and I, I hate to, to put this one so low because it it looks really cool. This the two tone green, or I mean, there, I should say three, because it's got this um, matte darker green, this shiny metallic, um, like a, a you know, it's a like it's a different sort of material, um, and then the bright green of the lantern logo, and on his belt, looks really awesome. Uh, the sculpt is awesome. The, the the nitpicks for me are this accessory is just unpleasant to deal with every time. I don't know. If you've figured out the way this th accessory is meant to be, like, uh, situated on here, please let me know. If, if there's a video out there that can show me the, the right way, it just doesn't feel like it, it fits just right. In a way, it, it always wants to kind of, like, <laughs> fall over into the character or even just be when it starts leaning on the character a little too much it doesn't feel like it's like coming out of his lantern ring like a, a construct you know and it doesn't just i don't know it bothers me um and and then the uh the sculpt is really cool and he's, he's a really cool looking guy but, uh, and, and the fact that you can, he's got these tubes on his neck, I love it, and, and, but can still bend his, turn his head, so cool. But the, the waist, the torso, it, it just always is kind of a little tight and looks kind of odd if you want to bend it around. Um, so some of his kind of, uh, I feel like some, some of those posing capabilities are taken away. And I, I hate to rank this one so low because it just, it looks really cool. He's got his, um, you know, he looks like he's just like, like his physical form is decaying and he kind of kept it alive just with the power of the lantern. Looks really cool. But as far as just the sheer, um, I guess, kind of functionality of, of what, uh, what kind of poses you can put him in, he just doesn't feel like he has quite the range um, of some of the other characters. Uh, and then, okay, moving on. Next up um, is going to be The Drowned, which, uh, like I said in my review, way better than I expected it to be. A really, really cool looking figure. Um, Almost, I would say, starts to look a little bit more like some of the Mortal Kombat sculpts that McFarlane has been doing in just that it has 
a ton of textures, a ton of different textures. Um, you know, there's this like algae kind of a seaweed look on the rubber. These boots look like crusty kind of barnacles. Um, and then the material of like the corset and then the jacket. The jacket just looks so rad. And the way it, it wraps around, the way that the different um, pieces of the costume sort of just like meet. Uh, and then like this this underwater sort of weightless look to the hair sculpt. The great uh, gold trident accessory that um, gives, gives this character just kind of a unique sort of um, stance and unique sort of um, opportunities for posing with the... Uh, with a tall trident that's almost almost as big as she is. So an unexpected um, exceeds expectations uh, uh, when it came to this one, and and right around I would say the middle of the of the the quality scale in this team. So moving on, and I think this is going to be my next uh, controversial choice is that the next one on my list is actually going to be. Merciless, which was the build of Fig, and don't get me wrong, it's great. It is so cool. The scale, you know, he just looks so big compared to the other characters, um, and uh, the way that they they managed to do a larger character that still has some great articulation. Um, like I love the the rotation at these um, elbows. Uh, and the fact that, like you can see right here, these shoulder pads lift up in such are, are movable in such a way you can get his arm up um, and still not have these shoulder uh, shoulder pads um, oriented in such a way that it throws off kind of the pose or the uh, the body language of it. It's really really awesome. But it does have some shortcomings. This is the um, only one I've really experienced so far that I actually had to dunk in hot water. The shoulders were kind of tight. Um, so that, that you know, it feels like it might be uh, a little more lacking in the QC compared to some of the other characters. And I, I don't know how much I totally love the, the paint job. Uh, it, it's a little too... Um, saturated with that with that like sort of cerulean kind of color um and and like the they've done these rubber pieces here with this try to match this metallic but it, it feels a little cheap um, and and sometimes i think when these characters are have this heavier paint on them it just affects the way it feels in the same way as that red death i was talking about earlier but it's so cool it, you know the chain mail the textures of the fur and the fabric, uh, it's rad. Uh, okay, well, so we're, we're getting to the top three here. And maybe, maybe unexpected choices, maybe not, for top three. But uh, my, my third place position is going to go to Murder Machine, which, uh, I mean, in my opinion, and... I might, I'm probably not alone in this opinion. I think Murder Machine was the sleeper hit of the of the wave that featured Dawnbreaker and Grim Knight and Devastator. Like, you know, he, he maybe when you see him doesn't stand out um, or seem like maybe um, a particularly uh, exciting figure. But something about it, something about the sculpt, it's just this very simplified human form. It's got nice details like this piping here with the vibrant colors. Uh, it's just really rad. I mean, the shortcomings might be that this, um, that his uh, diaper pieces maybe goes a little high. Um, and then one thing I, I like that it has this accessory, this different hand you can swap out. It, uh, when you when you pose them all together, you know something like this gives him a little bit of differentness, you know, compared to just you know the other the other people helps him kind of feel like he's he's uh, carved out his own sort of unique uh, 
skills or, or you know, uh, what, what he, you know, is bringing to the table in this lineup. Um, but it looks a little bit like, you know, the Sentinels from the Matrix. Whereas I feel like in the comics, the way he's drawn and stuff, he looks more like almost like a nano machines or like a digital construct kind of. Um, I, I, I don't know what the solution would have been to maybe achieve that effect. It just maybe doesn't feel a little bit like I think he's supposed to be conveyed. And and I, I the the back here, the spine, looks really cool, but maybe just doesn't seem to quite match the rest of the sculpt. But uh, definitely an unexpected highlight of this team is this murder machine. So moving on to number two is a little front row Joe here, the Robin Crow. And when it comes to maybe shortcomings, this figure has some of the worst, but it's just so well executed that he's number two for me. So, you know, the shortcomings being maybe the uh, single joints in, uh, in the knees and the elbows. Um which impair it. And I, I love the concept of doing this, um, his shorts in this rubber, but when it comes to actually lifting his legs up, they can, they're kind of constrictive and they don't really want to let, especially if you're, you know, trying to get, you know, have him walking or, or moving his legs in two different directions. It barely allows for that. Um, and, and the way, the way his, um, ankles are recessed in his shoes like this uh it looks really cool but that's about as as far as you can go um which when you've got a character that's kind of meant to be i think crouched over um that that can get in the way but i mean look at that torso like he can get all the way into the marilyn manson zone of that um and and but the the torso even though it's made of this rubber material it just still has this amazing detail and just looks looks perfect the the cape this is i think it's got to be one of the best looking sculpts in the multiverse line so far and i've got this head i was originally just gonna stick with the one single crow but um, you can see the way that I've got these displayed now. I think I've got a little space opened up for Batman Who Laughs to, ha to have at least two and maybe three Robin Crows, depending on if I can find all three heads uh, without paying aftermarket prices. So we'll see how that goes. And these hands, I love... He, you know, this this hand... It's a little bit of the neutral C grip accessory hand, action figure hand, but it it doubles pretty well as a gesture hand. And if a character is not going to have like an accessory they hold, give me give me two gesture hands or or a fist and a gesture hand. I don't need a I don't need a gun hand. I don't need an accessory hand. I want one that looks like it matches the sort of attitude of the sculpt. And this one, especially that hand. It does it. So uh, that brings us all the way to number one. Probably not a surprise that it's going to be Devastator. Uh, I mean, much has already been said about just how awesome this is. And I, and I don't think you can even really get an idea until you hold it in your hand and feel how heavy it is. And yet feel just how much articulation it has. It's you could get this thing in so many poses. I kind of, right now, I've got him in this, like, sort of Hulk scream, you know, uh, kind of pose. But, you know, you could really, you could have him holding somebody up by the neck and about to pound him in the teeth. You know, uh, the, the moving jaw uh, opens him up to have just a lot of different sort of... Um, uh, kind of attitudes, just depending on how you want to pose them. Uh, and the, the detail, obviously. The detail, I mean, in the sculpt, that's nothing new, but this is kind of when they started doing some really creative next-level stuff with their softer material 
you know, so his big spikes are made out of rubber, um, which goes a long way to um, sort of alleviating fears about him, like falling or, or manhandling him too much when you're posing him. You know, these aren't going to just snap off. They're not brittle. And these shorts, this is one of the best in this entire multiverse line. This is one of the most well-executed things I think they've done. The sculpt matches the detail up perfectly in the harder plastic pieces. It's got a ton of give. Um, and, you know, this guy can do more than some of the, the uh, you know, figures that are normal size. Uh, so this is the home run. I, I hope you've been able to find this. Um, you know, uh, some people had trouble finding him when he first came out. I hope enough time has passed that you can find this pretty easily now. Because I found this at Walmart for fifteen eighty eight, which is bananas. That um, a figure this size and this good is like less than the just normal retail. It's incredible. So there they are again, one more time, and uh, that's the Dark Knight's metal lineup. Uh, you know, some some good, some bad, but overall uh, a great team. And I have to say, I really like the way these were. Um, rolled out, sort of staggered, uh, because while I think it's cool that they're like doing like a full wave of Last Night on Earth, so it's a full wave of one source material, and you get your whole sort of team and the build a figure um, in one wave. I like th the potential for um, the release model they've shown so far of having a wave that's made up of different uh, people. Or, or different source materials, I should say. Um, so they could keep some of these different um, sources going. Like, I'd like to see more White Knight characters. I'd like to see more Arkham characters. But I don't necessarily want you to just do a full wave of only that source material. I like the variety. And I like sort of, you know, uh, slowly building the team over time. Um, and getting to... Uh, prolong that that kind of hunt and that anticipation of it so uh i would love to know how you rank these characters in this team um or how you feel about the whole multiverse line overall you know uh i know people have some some beefs with with them um but i i, I think this team here from from batman who laughs all the way up over, you know, to the most recent, The Drown, really shows off, um, like, just how far they've come in this multiverse line in such a short amount of time. Uh, in a year, they've, they've, they've jumped from, uh, you know, a, a pretty good, interesting uh, version of, of Batman Who Laughs and, you know, into some of the best figures that they've done so far. Um... So let me know how you feel, um, and uh, thanks again to Kevin for the kind of incepting me with the idea of getting all these guys out and uh, taking a look at them, um, and we will talk to you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.